Well, same time of the year, we're doing our first tomato trials evaluation. Looks like we had a wonderful harvest, and we're going to enjoy doing this. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Road by Road Gardening Show, the best dead gum gardening show on the internet, where we talk about gardening, a little bit of cooking, and growing your own food. Now sit back and enjoy. Hey folks, I'm Greg. I'm Sheila. Wow, the garden giving, up, giving it up. In, and by the way, I want y'all to try to guess what this is. We're not, are we going to tell them what this is? Maybe that should be the question. This is going to be the question for the Monterey giveaways. This right here. I want y'all to study these flowers right here. If you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. It's a very unique flower. So uh, put in below. And we'll, we'll, at the end of the show, we'll get into it with the Monterey. But that's going to be the question for the Monterey giveaway. They're very pretty. What flower is that? And I guarantee you're going to be surprised if you don't know. Anyway, it is pretty. Garden is just in full bloom. Mm -hmm. Full bloom. I mean, everything's giving it up. We're going to do our first round of tomato trials. All our tomatoes are not ready yet, so we'll have another one coming up after that. We're going to probably do these things in stages because we had some earlier crops. We'll get some later crops. Example of that, we don't even have a hallucinator yet. No. My hallucinator crop was planted later, so we got, and I actually got some more, like big beef, purple boar. We got one lemon boar. Those are not even... Uh, started ripening yet so we've got plenty more to come but we've got way more than enough to get started with our tomato trials oh what else we got in the garden that we've ate all week oh we've got all kind of stuff in the garden look here this obsession not obsession excuse me got obsession Cinnamon. on my mind i just had a conversation about similar x r sweet i got to get that on that right there right there folks is a wonderful corn right there. Now, if you see this right here, this is the reason this is not a commercial viable variety because of that shank. When you snap that ear off, that goes down too far and they want a good commercial variety to have a shank a lot shorter than that right there. This one doesn't pack well in those uh, crates, but it is absolutely a wonderful roadside variety or I think better than that, a home garden variety. Mm -hmm. One, if I've had very few worms, I don't think I know I didn't spray the first time, and uh, it's just been off you the chain. Aid, we have had cream corn, we've had Mexican corn, we've had roasted corn, we've had a low country boy. Man. It is one of my favorites. Did you chew with that right there? Mm. That's the sweetest corn. It doesn't have to be cooked. I it mean, doesn't have to be cooked. I believe honey slick may be a little bit sweeter than what I've grown for, but that is a very sweet corn. Now, I we did the Mexican street corn last night. Mm -hmm. We've done that two nights ago. We kind of changed the recipe a little bit. Now, I had just soon lathered it down with butter myself. Now, y'all enjoyed the Mexican yeah, street corn. it was corn, different. It was different. But I enjoy just straight butter and a little salt does it for me. Yeah, some sour cream. Some special type of cheese. I can't say the name of it. Paprika. Man, that's good stuff. I won't save that for later. I'm like you. I could eat that just just raw. Just raw. What else um, you got going on in the garden? What else we got going on in the garden? Well, we got our green beans or toward our house green blades. Right, I can some of those. It's going toward our last pick, and they're about to give it up. Some of our squashes went by the wayside. Oh, uh, we got. Okra's still a little slow. Okra's still a little slow. I just planted some more. So I got another crop coming along. Um, peppers are peppers st still crazy. Good. They'll be go crazy till we get a frost. Yeah. And uh, all these unique variety of tomatoes are coming along. Some of them is not there yet, but it come along. Speaking of tomatoes, I did some in the freeze dryer. What did you think? All night long. Mm. It actually took... It took like 30 hours because I was doing some cherry tomatoes. And in hindsight, I should have cut them in half. I just like poked a hole with them in them with a toothpick. And it took so long. If you've never experienced a freeze-dried tomato, it's worthwhile. And it, the taste of that right there is totally different than those cherry tomatoes. Yeah. So it looks. So I wonder if I could make a tomato sandwich out of that in January. I should have rehydrated some yeah, here. Let me hold that one right there. <laughs> I can't get that because it turns to powder. So if you folks don't know that right there, if I was to crinkle it up, that's just powder. Right, well. 
but it strange, tastes, tastes strange like a tomato. flavor. It does taste like a tomato, but a very pungent tomato. Well, when you freeze dry, it like exasperates all those flavors. It does. They're more it does. intense. It's very intense. Yeah. Yeah, very intense. And uh, do some more of those. We may have some here else in the garden. <gasps> really? Yep. I didn't know about this. Yep. So let's see if she's right. Folks, this is yellow doll. She's sneaking it in on me. Look here. We're gonna be in the mess if it ain't right. There. I know. One, two. <gasps> Look at her. Ain't that pretty? Oh. Yep. Oh. Yellow doll watermelon. I ate one yesterday. I, to, I did. I didn't tell anybody about it. I ate it. I, me and Maggie was out there by mm. with it. It's good, isn't it? Very sweet. That was awesome. We love these yellow dolls. Now, last year I planted sangria. The year before that, I kind of switched it up every year, every other year. I'll grow yellow doll one year. The next year I grow sangria. You know about the salt. I do believe. The yellow doll has a sh higher sugar content than sangria. Mm. Mm. That's going to mess your taste buds up right there. Mm. I'm going to have to put that down here and save it for later. We will, we will not get the show done today. This is an eating show today. This is an eating show today. All right, folks. People that don't like us eating on the show, they just will tune off. Well this is going to be it for today. All right, so we've got some varieties here that's been our staple that we've grown for the last few years, and then we got some that we've experimented with. We've got a breeder that we deal with some out in California out there, and he must, he's got lots of different varieties. And um, we carry some of his, but we by no means carry all of them. So we picked through earlier, I said we, you picked through and ordered some varieties that we was interested to grow out to mm -hmm. see how they would do. And uh, they've done quite well. We've been, we've been extremely satisfied with them so far. Just about all of them, I believe all of them are indeterminate, correct? Mm -hmm. But I classify these as novelty types. Now there's nothing wrong with them. But if I was going to grow, a, if I wanted a lot of tomatoes, I wouldn't necessarily depend on those. But I definitely think they have a place in the garden. Yeah, I don't think if you want to um, can or freeze, or they wouldn't be your go-to for that right. kind of thing. Right. I, I but agree uh, with you. I would say novelty, just eating tomatoes. Very good flavor. Now, production is not... Uh, Probably, well, with most of these varieties, production is not going to be the name of the game. No. Um, one of the varieties is disease resistant. I did have some blossom in rot on one of them. But um, now the blossom in rot is more of a yeah. physiological problem, not a, a disease problem. Um, but overall, I'm happy with them, especially since I have not grown any tomatoes in five or six years. Yeah, and another thing too, you know, we live here in the south and we face a lot of disease and insect pressure and these have held up extremely well for us. Mm -hmm. Now these were grown in a raised bed, so keep that in mind. So let's start with the furthest one on the end over there. Okay, so this is, I'll let you cut on it. This is the uh, pink Berkeley tie-dye. It's a indeterminate. Turn it around so everybody can see the bottom of it. See if we can show them those modeled color in on that right there. Uh, it's known for early productivity. It was the first one ready. Um, striped port wine with green stripes. And it said 10 out of 10 people prefer this better than the Cherokee purple. Really? Mm -hmm. All right, so can you see what it looks like there? It's a very meaty type tomato there. It's a beef steak. It is a beef steak type. And you can tell that by looking at how much meat is inside there. It has that purple in color to it that we always associate with great flavor. Yeah, high antioxidants, that purple in Okay, so we're going to get you one there, and we're going to get me one here. And we're going to put some salt on it. This is that Redmond's. Now, I have partaked in a few tomato sandwiches of this already, so I know what it tastes like, but I'm going to give you my thoughts on it compared to some of the rest of them. My gosh, I won't stay up there. 
very good flavor. I would consider that uh, uh, acid type tomato. Acid I think type. So. Yeah, I don't think somewhat it's... not heavy, but a low acid type tomato. Very low acid. Low acid type tomato. Very good. It's very soft for the texture. Is softer than what we'll see in some of these other varieties right here. Yeah. I I classified this probably a seven. Very sweet. Very sweet. Seven. What do you think? Do I need to write this down? Well, you can. Okay. Seven is what I would give that one right there. A, se a seven? A, what's one to ten. Uh, ten being off the chain, one being low, low, low. I say it's a seven. What do you say? Uh, I say it's a eight. You say it's an eight? Wow. Mm -hmm. Feeling gracious there, are you? Yeah. All right, so what are we putting these that's cut up? Just anywhere? Just anywhere. All right, so let's go to the next one. So the next one is called Blue beauty and it starts i didn't bring a green one but it starts out with blue around the top and green on the bottom and then it'll turn completely pink um let's try to find one that's riper maybe this one so the next i guess i'd be considered to paint them out. it's a beefsteak also and it's a cross between Beauty King and Indigo Rose. Mm. Yes, it is a pink tomato. You look on it has a there. pink meaty flesh. Mm -hmm. Like I say, the dark blue top, and it's a slicer. Now, pink tomatoes, normally speaking, do not stack up on flavor compared to some of the rest of them. That's just a given. It's a very pretty tomato, though. Totally different flavor profile. Not as sweet. Meaty. Mm -hmm. It's not acidy though either. No, it's not. I'm going to have to go with about a six on that. I'm going to be pretty tough on my tomato. Mm -hmm. What do you say? I'll say about a six. Okay. Okay. All right. So next we have... It's called Black Beauty, and it's very similar to the Blue Beauty, except these can turn completely black, but they start off really deep black. Um, you have a good right one? Yeah, that's a good yeah, right one. Yeah, that's a right good there. right one. Yeah, that's a pretty tomato. So now, this is not considered a pink tomato, correct? No. So it's a pink Berkeley tie-dye and an India, indigo apple cross. Mmm. Yeah, more of a redder inside there. Not near as... Yeah, these aren't as ripe as some. They are really dark on the inside. It has... It's known for its earthy tones. And it has the same antioxidants as blueberries and blackberries. Wow. I really don't even know if we should be putting salt on. If we should just be eating without salt. You reckon salt takes away or enhances the mm -hmm. flavor? No, when those are really ripe, that might not be a fair. Yeah, I'm going to give that one a seven. The reason I'm going to give it a seven is because it was my favorite one mm -hmm. uh, of, of the ripe ones that I ate earlier. Now, this one's not quite ripe enough. Still a good tomato here, but I'm going to give it a good seven. Okay. So the next one is the Pink Berkeley Tie-Dye. Um... And it is green, red stripe. And uh, <laughs> hold the other one up right there. This one? Yeah, they have very unique uh, shapes to them. It kind of looks like an heirloom, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Some of them. Think, you think, which one's the ripest? This one's the ripest. Okay. It may be right. too ripe. Uh, I it so it's an indeterminate early productivity. This uh, says the fruits are usually um, bilo. I guess you would call that. It's a port wine with green stripes. Mm. Seems to be a darker tomato. Yeah. yeah. Now, my, my gut tells me this is going to rank pretty high on the flavor profile. Oh, no. I'm totally red. That... Did you get a mixed I up? did. This is the large boar. Oh, the large boar. Okay. Yeah. All right. Excuse me. It's back at this large boar. Because oh. it has pink... I don't think I've tried this one. I don't think we tried that one either. I 
That's a good strong seven for me right there. Mm -hmm. I like that one the best. Really? You gonna go a little higher on that? Now yeah. you said an eight earlier on one, you got a little gracious. I like that. Let me try another piece with salt. That's a solid seven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's got a unique flavor. It does. It has a little different twist. I'm going to do a nine. Nine? Mm hmm Woo. A nine? A nine. Wow. All right. So Mama Hoss is through with hers. Let me move on to mine. That's the last of yours, correct? Yeah, I think so. Of the big tomatoes. And then we're just going to mention this one because this is the ripest one I got. This is a variety called Myrtle, which is a Simnus variety here that I'm growing out for trial this year. So far, they've done pretty good. I'm not seeing quite as much vigor in the plants as some of the rest of them, but you know what? We're trying to grow tomatoes, not plants. So I'm holding out on judgmental on that yet. Held up really good disease-wise yet. Disease-wise, uh, insect, I hadn't noticed any more stress from it than I have any rest of them. So when those get ripe, we'll, we'll taste those. Now I only have three that are really ripe right now. We have several more that's coming along, as I said. This right here, and I'm gonna show you two different ones here. This is probably a better one. This is a pink tomato. This is one we started carrying last year called Pink Delicious. It has an heirloom look to it, but it has disease resist to it. This is a hybrid. Uh, this was a really good tomato performing for us last year, and it has performed well this year. Now, I don't know about yours because you drew, grew all those. These are not heavy producers by no means. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get near the poundage off these what you are some of these other varieties, but they are unique. For pink tomato, they do taste pretty good. And they're easy to grow. It's not the largest indeterminate I've ever grown. Aren't they pretty for pink tomato? Isn't that That's beautiful great. right there? Yeah, very good tomato there. It's a beef steak. It's a beef steak type. Yes, ma'am. You can see all the, the meatiness of the uh, tomato in there. I'm going to be generous and give you a big slice of that one. Holds up, maybe not quite as juicy as some of the rest of them that we've tried. It's real similar to that um, Blue Beauty. It is similar. I didn't know that till we just taste them in order. Mm -hmm. Very similar. Mm -hmm. What did I get, Blue Beauty? Six. I'm gonna go with six on this. In fact, I, if, you, if I was blindfolded, I don't believe I could tell the difference. Mm -hmm. So if you ever want a tomato to sell on a roadside stand with a lot got a nice heirloom look, it's pink delicious, it's easy to grow, and it would make a great one for that. I would probably bet you in most of the grocery stores where they have the heirloom tomatoes at, this is the variety of these there. All right, and then we have the red snapper. My hot snatters are not ready yet, but my red snappers have really done well show, this year. Show them in the camera. You oh, had a... Oh, yeah, this is one of the smaller ones here. This is probably the normal size of my red snapper. I picked this one because it was riper there. You had some actually bigger oh, than that. Oh, yeah, I did. I've been giving them away like crazy. Loaded up. I got the best tomato crop I've had in years. Uh, red snapper, if you don't know, is a determinate type tomato. It's a cicada variety that really does well as far as foliage. Heavy producer. Look at the meatiness inside that. It's more right meaty. Yeah. It's more red than pink. Though. It is more red. So it is considered a more red tomato. This is a staple right here. This one's easy to grow, heavy producer, and just a good uniform tomato. If you look at them, very, I'm going to show you this one here. Very little crack. And see how smooth the top of these are? These varieties from cicada are known for that smoothness at the top. Unlike some other varieties we got. I was starting, when we first started, I was putting it on the plate with a nice fork and everything. I just moved over to salt and vanilla. Mm. Not my favorite. Huh? Not my favorite. It's not my favorite either. I'm going to go with a good, a good six. I'm going to say a five. Really? Mm -hmm. Hurts me a little bit, there, girl. 
And it'd be interesting to put the red snapper up against the the halcyonate on taste yeah. test. We'll have to do we'll that do later. We'll do that later. On. Yep. All right, folks. Now here's the variety right here that won the tomato contest about four years ago. This is called Lemon Boy. This is a variety from Simnus. This is an indeterminate tomato. It's a hybrid, but it's got good disease resistance to it and it has great flavor. Most of what we have found is these deep yellow tomatoes have intense flavor to them. Sometimes your mind will play tricks on you because you don't want to be eating a yellow tomato. Sort of like a yellow watermelon? Sort of kind of like a yellow look at the inside there. Mm. Very meaty, bright, bright. Mm -hmm. Orange there. Mmm, that's good. I'd give that one a nine. It has very good flavor, but it's not high in acid. But it does have a good flavor. I'm going to go with a solid eight on that one. That's a good tomato. So there you have it, folks. There is the slicers that we have ready. My favorite would be a tie between the Lemon Boy and which one? The... You like the, well, the, the Black Beauty. The, the Black Beauty, yeah. The Black Beauty and the Lemon Boy for mm -hmm. me would be my two ties. And normally speak with indeterminate most people would tell you the flavor profile of an indeterminate is better than a determinate type. Yeah, I agree. Yep. All right, so we got that out of the way. Let's just run through real quick on some cherry tomatoes. Okay. Because we've got a lot of cherry tomatoes ready. This right here is, and we talked about this on the live the other night. This would be easy because we ain't got to get all into no slice and everything. This is Mountain Vineyard. This is a great type tomato right here. Does extremely well, indeterminate, but look how dark red it is. That's because it's got what they call the Crips and Gene in it. Mm -hmm. now, this is one of our favorite tomatoes here. It loads up, very productive. And it's, the inside is like a real tomato. Mm -hmm. Very sweet. Very sweet. And go over the little birdies. Save those to last. Okay. Little birdie series. We got Rosie Finch. These are the dwarf tomatoes we love to tell y'all about, but just load up those very comp <laughs> compact plants. I like that flavor. That's good. Roots pinch, pink tomato. I can paint. These three series in that little birdie series, Rosie Finch, Yellow Canary, and Red Robin. This would be the Yellow Canary. Okay. Has that classic kind of tangy yellow taste to it. And we, we didn't have one. We didn't do this one. We don't That's have a any. red robin. Oh, red robin. Oh, here's the red robin. These red robins are really nice red color to them. That's my favorite of the three. That's mine too. That's good. And sun sugar. Sun sugar. You're going to save that? Okay. Let's do your two first over there. All right. one. So this is another one of the um, wild boar. Berries Crazy Cherry. It's a pale yellow oval, and it grows in large clusters. You don't like that? Yeah, it's weird. It's kind of got a real sweet flavor mm -hmm. to it. I really like that. Sweet. It's like a plum. That's though. the sweetest tomato we've ate. Mm-hmm. Sweet and a little tangy. That is weird. Yeah, I really like this. That's good. They grow, grow in big clusters. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now this is this is one of my favorites. This is the Napa Chardonnay, and it grows in clusters like that too. They start out green and then they turn yellow. Now this is actually ripe, folks. Yeah. So that's the that's the color of the ripe tomato right there. Very thin skin. Like pearl lesset. This is my favorite cherry tomato this year. A little tangy, very juicy. That is a good tomato. And I wish it had better color to it, but that is a very good tasting tomato. And then the last one I've got is da, 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 Brad's Atomic Grape. I was going to get you to cut that one. I don't know if it's right yet or not. I don't think it's right. We'll cut it anyway. 
You can just show the inside. Yeah, it's kind of greenish. Which it's elongated, has lavender and purple stripes. We had an immature. And the interior is a green blush red. So that it's supposed to be green on the inside. What you think? That's a little strange. That's different for sure. Mm, I like that. Yeah. I like that. That's real good. Might be my new favorite. All right. So here is my all-time favorite right here, folks. This is Sun Sugar. And I don't honestly believe anybody can beat Sun Sugar for a cherry tomato right there. It has that nice orange, yellowish color to it. They Sun Sugar and they Sun Gold. And you can't tell a lot of difference in either one of them. I can't. Both of these right here, in my opinion, if I was going to only grow one cherry tomato, this is it. Yeah. Yeah, I would say those be the Snapper. Mm -hmm. But just a total different It is, profile. but that's the most flavorful cherry tomato ever, mm -hmm. in my opinion, right there. All right, so the disappointment out of the bunch. Oh, uh, yeah. All right, folks, this was a variety we added last year. Whoops. And this is Indigo Blueberry. It's absolutely beautiful. And I've said several times, whoever named this thing had to know what it was doing because it's got to be a good tomato with that name. So it starts out with this blueberry. It looks like a blueberry. Well, right here's one. I'd probably yeah. sort right there. There's some on here. Then it'll turn a reddish color. And then it ends up solid red. Yeah, here's one right here. Ooh. But um, I... Yeah, the flavor's just not been there for these for me. Now the plants have done really well. Very vigorous. Taste one, you know, one of those. I got bottom. one. I'm gonna let you have that one. Very bland. I don't know that we'll keep that variety right there. You know, it looks really good and it should sell good, but in the, the day, just didn't have the flavor to it to me. Very disappointed in the flavor of that indigo blueberry. Yeah, and that's I, the reason we grow to find out this kind of thing. I give it like a one. Oh yeah. That would be my loser out of the bunch it's right It's very there. juicy, but it just doesn't... Yeah, this Chardonnay would probably be the biggest surprise to me of any tomatoes to flavor profile that. That one probably next. <laughs> and then the, the Sun Sugar has got them all beat hands down. So we'll do another one a little later on. we got some more varieties. I mean, be interesting to put Big Beep up there. We put Purple Boy up there against Lemon Boy and see how they do. Um, be interested if we had some more varieties that we will have in a couple of weeks. Hopefully we can maybe do this again. You know, I don't know how many tomato varieties there probably are out there. Oh, not goodness. thousands of them. And most people are very hung up on one or two varieties and for good reason. I mean, if you get if you like something, you like it. But a lot of times it don't help to get out of the ordinary a little bit. You won't find something that's very unusual unless you step out of your comfort zone and grow something new. So. That's what we did. And that's probably going to be a couple of varieties we add over there for next year. I think so. And definitely the... Um, Black Beauty. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that one. Yep. All, All right. right. That's tomatoes. You've got a mess here. Yeah, you've got a mess. Get a bunch of tomato sandwiches mm -hmm. from that. Okay. Garden Spotlight. Garden Spotlight for this week is... Cheryl Crowell from Locust Grove, Georgia. How about Cheryl? Got some nice zucchinis Zone there. eight. And look at her squash. Look how green those, those leaves are. are. Green right wow. She grows okra peas, corn, onions, eggplant, tomatoes, pepper, herbs, sunflower, and garlic. Got some yellow zucchinis going on there. And she did say lately she had a lot of uh, coffee weed. Have you ever heard of coffee I weed? I have heard of coffee weed. It's a it's something we we see a lot in row crops down here. Hmm. Coffee weed. Thank you, Cheryl, for sending that in. And the old goat. Old goat drawing. So, folks, every week the old goat is on set here somewhere. If you find the old goat, put in the comments below where the old goat's at. And it will put you in the drawing for the old goat draw the next week. And this week's winner is Butch Jones. Butch, send us your shipping address to cussservehostools.com and we'll get you a nice gift in the mail. And we got the Monterey giveaway mm -hmm. to give away. All right. Last week's question was, what are you planting in June? What do we get on that? 
a lot of people plant okra and flowers. Yeah. Can you get that one right there? All right, folks. Every week, the great company Monterey sponsors this giveaway right here. They give us this four-product giveaway. Fish you go on there. You got your natural fertilizer there. Complete disease control, which pretty much works on everything. It's a uh, biofungicide. And we got Monterey Horticulture Oil, which is great for those soft body insects. And the great thing about this one right here is it won't burn, so you can spray anytime during the day. And then we have the yellow sticky traps that you can put in your greenhouse or in your garden to trap some of those beetles or those insects to see what you've got gnawing on your plants. Gnawing. This uh, means they eating on the plant. Gnawing. 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 Or you can use it for control. So there you have yellow sticky traps. Fish iguana, complete disease control, and Monterey hot control. And the winner from last week is Carrie Whitaker. Carrie Whitaker, send us your information to Hoss Tool, excuse me, Custserve at HossTools.com, and we will get the four pack of the Monterey products giveaway. And for That's next it. week, or this week, this week. This week for next week's winner. Put in the comments what type of flower this is from. Do you think somebody's gonna get that? We'll see. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one. We'll see. I wouldn't get it. I would have never got it either. I would have never got it, yeah. All right, folks, thank you for joining us. I hope you're growing tomatoes, and I hope if you're not enjoying them, you will be soon, because I can promise you, I've eaten more tomato sandwiches in the last two weeks than I've eaten in a long time. You got a lot more to eat. Then I got a lot more to eat. So thank you for joining us. Now it's time for you to get outside, enjoy life, and to get dirty. <laughs>